the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the 11th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And today is a day for life. A day for life is a day dedicated in the church to raise awareness about the value and meaning of life at every stage of life and in every condition. And so today we pray and ask God for life. And whatever situation we find ourselves in, life condition, we offer it to God, that God will take care of us. And today happens to be Father's Day. We pray in this Mass for all fathers, that God will continue to protect them, that God will strengthen them, that God will sustain them, so that they may be fathers to the world, to their children, and to the church. This and other intentions we pray in this Mass. Let us prepare our hearts that our prayers may be acceptable in the sight of God by acknowledging our sins and asking him for pardon. I confess to my God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have received in my heart and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my fault, through my fault, through my most previous fault. Therefore, I ask the person in the name of the person, all the ages of the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us all our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Yeah. 
O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. From Rephidim, the Israelites set out again. And when they reached the wilderness of Sinai, there in the wilderness they pitched their camp. There facing the mountain, Israel pitched camp. Moses then went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Say this to the house of Jacob. Declare this to the sons of Israel. You yourself have seen what I did with the Egyptians, how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. From this you know that now. If you obey my voice and hold fast to my covenant, you of all the nations shall be my very own. For all the earth is mine. I will count you a kingdom of priests a consecrated nation. The word of the Lord. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him, sing for joy. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Indeed, how good is the Lord, eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. We were still helpless when at his appointed moment Christ died for sinful men. It is not easy to die even for a good man, though of course for someone really worthy a man might be prepared to die. But what proves that God loves us is that Christ died for us while we were still sinners. Having died to make us righteous, is it likely that he would now fail to save us from God's anger? When we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, we were still enemies. Now that we have been reconciled, surely we may count on being saved by the life of his son. Not merely because we have been reconciled, but because we are filled with joyful trust in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have already gained our reconciliation. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he felt sorry for them because they were harassed and dejected like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. He summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirit, with power to cast them out and to cure all kinds of diseases and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the one who was to betray him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them as follows. Do not turn your steps to pagan territory, and do not enter any Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go... Proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils. You received without charge, give without charge. Beloved in Christ, the gospel of the Lord. God is good, and all the time, good. This is what is said in the responsorial psalm, the last verse, that the Lord is good, and his mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. And that is the mercy, and so we experience this today. My dear friends, God's people, the the life of the Israelite, their experience is our experience. And so whenever the word of God is proclaimed and it's about the Israelites and it's about them moving to the mountain and it's about God talking to them, God is speaking to you and God is speaking to me. Today we hear from the first reading that the people gathered in Sinai (coughs) before the mountain. And God told them something, and that is what God is telling you. And he said, if you listen to my commands, you will be my possession. If you listen to my commands, you will be my possession. And I will make you a kingdom that is holy, a consecrated people. And you shall be holy and consecrated people. So... The Lord chooses each one of us for himself. We are his people, the sheep of his flock, as the responsorial psalm says to us. And the choice of us from God as his possession calls us to this life of holiness. Life that is different. A life that is set apart. A life that is pleasing in the sight of God. So God has called you to be different. God has called me to be different. And the difference that God has called us all into is not to be different in evil things, but to be different like God is different. And so he calls you, he calls me to this kind of holiness. And what is holiness about? Sometimes we make holiness to like something up there, but 
Holiness is living in accordance with God's will. Holiness is living in accordance with the will of God, with God's command. So, your way of holiness, as much as you live it in accordance with the will of God, is pleasing to God. As a priest, I have to live a kind of life that is pleasing to God. My being a priest does not qualify me for heaven straight away. Your being a mother, a father, a teacher, whatever profession that you are, does not qualify you straight away to heaven. It is living in accordance with the will of God, the command, that you become God's own possession, his own people, so that wherever God resides, you will also reside. But this is not just about our future life. God calls us to live it now. And he has this heart, which is full of mercy. He has this heart, which is full of love and compassion. And when he sees us, like God is seeing us, he's looking at us today, this morning. He's gazing at you. And he knows how you are troubled. He knows your distressed state. He knows how some of you, your lives are hopeless. He knows how some of you are in despair. He knows some of you are crying. He knows some of you are sad today. He knows some of you are thinking about many things and it's, 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 it's in fact, leading you to a place that has no coming back. But listen, he gazes at you with compassion. He gazes at you with concern. And he sees you, my child, I know you are troubled. I am here for you. So as Jesus looked at the crowds and felt sorry for them, so does Jesus look at you in your troubled state, in your dejected state, and he has mercy for you. This one, I want you to just look at yourself. What is that troubled state you find yourself in? That hopeless state, that harassed, they said they were like sheep without a shepherd. So sometimes, see, in your life, you realize that it's as if you don't know the direction to go. It's as if you are insecure, you don't feel protected, you don't feel loved, you don't feel the care of people. But if nobody cares, Jesus today wants to assure you, I care. I love you. I'm concerned about your life. And I'll always be gracious to you. So friend, that is the call to us. Let us avail ourselves, no matter our situation, our troubled state. God, through Jesus Christ, cares for you, cares for me. He gazes at you each day with compassion. And how God reaches out to us, he does it in various ways. And look at it. When Jesus had looked at the crowds, he said, they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were dejected. They were harassed. Then he called the twelve to himself. And when he called the twelve to himself, he strengthened them. And he gave them authority. And he sent them out to reach out to his people. So sometimes you meet people in life. They come to your help. And you've never met them before. Sometimes strangers come to help you in your dejected situation. This is the doing of the Lord. Because he sees your situation. He knows you need help. And so sometimes if you don't experience it directly from God, he sends people to come and rescue you. Have you ever experienced that in your life? That sometimes you are in some problem, in some situation, so confused, and somebody somewhere comes to you and assures you of something. Somebody comes to you and gives you a hand of help. I want you to say it in a way like Jesus did. He saw the problem. He sent out people into the world to care for them. And he said, cure the sick, raise the dead, heal the lepers. And it's all about the good. So whatever situation you find yourself, God has ministers. God has angels in the form of people to come into your life. And I have experienced it. Let me tell you one thing. I'm from the coastal area in Ghana. And those from the coastal areas, they are good at swimming. But I am useless. When it comes to swimming, don't trust me. Okay? But I tried my hands in the sea. And you know what? I was getting drowned. And to tell you, those people who die in the seas, right? They suffer before they die. 
I suffered. I really suffered. It was as if somebody was under the sea pulling me down. And I was trying to come out on this. So, you know, I was just swallowing the waters. And they were just filling me up. And I was struggling. And you know what? Within a circumstance of a moment, there was this young man who just, I, I just saw him touch my hand like this. And took me off. And when I realized I was taller than this boy, he, he was just a small boy. He was just a little boy. And this boy saved me. And I told him, he saved me. I never knew this boy. I never knew him anyway. And I see that this is where God reaches out to his people to rescue us in our times of helplessness, in our hopelessness. And that is what the second reading of today tells us. Whilst we were still helpless, God sent his son at the appropriate time to save us. Whilst the disciples and the crowds were dejected and helpless, Jesus looked at them with compassion and came to their aid. God has a way to save you. And God has a way to help you. And when all this had been done, Jesus told his disciples, Friends, you have received without pay. Give without pay. I know how that, that, what that means. I, I want to tell you a story, and that will communicate exactly what the statement of Jesus is about. For those of you who have gone to the Holy Land, there are two seas in the Holy Land. The Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. Actually, these are lakes, but we call them the sea. Now, these two seas are fed by one river, and that is the Jordan River. So the Jordan River feeds the Sea of Galilee, and it feeds the, the Dead Sea. But there's something strange about these two seas. The Sea of Galilee, in the Sea of Galilee, there are fishes. There is life. The water is always fresh. But the Dead Sea is, is, is super concentrated salt. And no fish can survive in there. No tree survives in there. So just look at this. Two seas. They are all fed by the same river. But one river has, is full of life with, with fish and life given. The other is just stagnant and dead. Why? The reason is the Sea of Galilee has an outlet that when the river flows into, it gives out. And so every time that Sea of Galilee is fresh, and fish team in it and live. That of the sea doesn't give out any water. And so it is stagnant and dead. Do you see this in the readings of today? So, the Sea of Galilee, because it is full of life, it receives and it gives. Because it receives and it gives, it is always fresh. It is always life-giving. But the Dead Sea only receives and never gets out. And so it is stagnant and dead. My dear friends, draw your own lesson. If you receive from the Lord without giving, you are stagnant and dead. But if you receive and you give out, you will always be fresh, alive, active, and life-given. Jesus is telling you, Jesus is telling you, you have received without pay. Give without pay, and you will have life. May the Lord grant us the grace, may the Lord grant us the strength, that as we receive from him, we open our heart, our soul, to give out, so that we will never be stagnant, but we will be ever fresh and life-given. And may God bless us all today and always. Amen.
Dear friends in Christ, let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will come Lord. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of strength, who with the from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the world. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Dear friends in Christ, God our Father cares for us at every moment and in every situation of our lives. And so let us now turn to him with all our needs. We pray for the church. May our communities always havens of welcome to those who are harassed and dejected. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. We pray for the vast number of people in the world who struggle to survive. May they find courage and help they need. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. We pray for all our young people as they come to the end of their exams that they will have achieved the results needed for their futures. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. We pray for all our sick. We remember especially Thomas John, John Prangle, Patricia Okuru, and for all who care for them. And we also remember Nanita Bartas, whose anniversary it is today, and for Elizabeth, who has died. May their souls, souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. We pray for all who have died. We remember especially Lennox Royer, whose funeral is this week. We pray for his wife, and all family and friends, and all whose anniversaries occur during this week. Especially for Hudson Angeles, for whom we offer this Mass. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. We ask Mary, our mother, to join with us in our prayers as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In silence, let us place before the Lord all that is in our hearts. Let us pray for all our fathers, biological fathers and figure fathers. Let us pray for those who have died and those who are alive. Heavenly Father, 
You gather us into your loving presence with infinite compassion, care, and love. Teach us how to love each other as you have loved us. Help us to be at the aid and help of people and to support them. Help us that our call to holiness might be lived in thus our present state of life. And grant to all fathers the grace to be good fathers to their family and to all. This and many other intentions we ask to your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God the Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with us in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Until you come again, Hosanna, Hosanna, in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Michael, our patron, and all with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, as we pray for our fathers, living and dead. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, fathers, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh, him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <coughs> Amen. <laughs> 
And now at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, <coughs> Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all the stress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For those who aren't receiving communion and for those online, pray that Jesus will come into your heart spiritually to nourish you.
Let us pray. <clears throat> As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May you please be seated for a brief announcement. So as you can see on the newsletter, I'll, I'll be living here to New York on Wednesday, but I'll be back in the month of August. So if you don't see me here beyond Wednesday, that is a reason. Kindly pray for me as I continue to pray for you. We would wish all fathers happy and blessed fathers. Shall we clap for all our fathers? And if you are a child, whether you are a mother child or father child, wish your father today, happy Father's Day. Whether you are old or young, you have a father. If your father is dead, pray to God and thank God for his life. Okay, so guys, remember today, go to your dads and wish them. And you parents, go to your dad and wish them as well. Wish your Father's Day. It's a blessing and it's a blessing to have our father. God bless you. God sustain you, God protect you, and may God increase your faith now and always. Amen. So for those who want to receive Jesus in Holy Communion next year, you have a meeting on Saturday, coming Saturday at 9 o'clock here in this church. If you have not yet presented your letter of admission into the course, please bring it along on Saturday and it will be dealt with to plan your program. Readers had a workshop and a meeting, well, workshop and formation day yesterday in Custom House. Um, it was successful, but I don't think we had a lot of our young readers in this church there. They're only the ones who already do it, who have been there already, the experienced ones. But it is good that all readers do attend these sessions. You learn a lot for your very good and for the good of the church. Next week is the turn of Extraordinary Ministers of Holy Communion, here we call Eucharistic Ministers, in St. Francis of Assisi, Stratford. Please do well to attend this program, and your parish priest wants you to be there. So um, the rest of the announcements are in the newsletter. Kindly pick a copy and note them. Today, as we said, is a day for life. Let us all value life and see that life comes from God. Whoever has life has God. So in every situation, in every condition, whether the person is a relative who is sick, who is abandoned, let us search for that person. The baby in the womb is still, has still half the life of God. Let us respect that baby in the womb. The one who is dying has still the life of God. Let us respect that person. And let us pray from every life, from the moment of conception to death. May God take care of our life here. And may God be with us always. Amen. Shall we now stand for God's blessing? The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended, and have a blessed Sunday.